Good morning, everybody. It's sure great to be in worship with you here today. I want to welcome those who are with us today in the sanctuary and also those who uh, will be watching vicariously through charter cable and other means, Ustream included. If you haven't already signed in <clears throat> on the pew pad, please do that. You've probably already uh, ascertained the reason why I wasn't out greeting and meeting today. I don't want to give you this cold that I've got. You don't want it. But it's good to be in worship nonetheless, and I'll just remind you and the confirmation students that we have an event coming up today. <clears throat> right after worship, we're going to head downstairs, pick up a piece of cake, to honor our newest members, members, dessert first. Life is short. Enjoy it. And then we'll be going straight to the Cambridge Room for the lunch provided by the Lavarasser family. Tomorrow, uh, next Sunday is a big Sunday. It's Veterans Day Sunday. And uh, we're going to be honoring our veterans, both living and deceased, in a, a very big way next week. We're going to have a potluck, and the potluck, surprise, surprise, main dish, spaghetti. <laughs> We've got a lot of spaghetti left over, and it was delicious, and I can only think after marinating for an extra week, it's going to be even better. So what we're asking you to do is to bring a side dish, perhaps a salad or a dessert, and uh, that will be our way to have quite a feast to honor our veterans. I'm told that we have a pie that was left behind. That's sad, it was purchased. No pie should be left behind. So <laughs> if you have a, a pie that you purchased, you didn't pick up at the auction, do so today. Next announcement. The Bible study that uh, we've been doing on a trial basis is uh, continuing next Sunday. I can't even remember the theme that we came up with. It's not the one on perseverance and patience. Say again. Blessings. blessings. Thank you. Yes, it's blessings. Next Sunday, right after church and coffee, we'll gather in the Cambridge room and anyone who would like to dig into the word with us. It's been really uh, enlightening. We've got a pretty amazing group of folks. And uh, finally, I do want to say that we're going to be welcoming our guests today, who are also our newest members, we'll be naming them later in the service, and in their honor, those that we have received thus far in 2015 will be recognized and welcomed at a cake and coffee uh, reception in their honor right after service on the lower level. So I think those are the extent of my announcements today. I'd like to invite LaDonna Anderson to come forward. That is you, right? Well, I'm going to invite you forward now because I think I've shared all of my announcements. <clears throat> and I think you're going to give us an update on the silent auction. Well, no, not really because it's not closed yet, folks. Oh. So, good morning all. I just want to get, make a friendly reminder I want to invite all of you to stop by the Plymouth Room on your way downstairs. There are a few very interesting and lovely items. So please take a look, perhaps pick up one or two, and the best part, oh, such a deal, you get to name your price. Thanks. See you later. Thank you, LaDonna. Catherine Labrasser, I am shocked and surprised. That you, that you have an announcement. <clears throat> Please, come on down. The price is right. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for Wednesday night. As usual, I get to reflect in the glory. And there was a lot of glory that you all accomplished. Many compliments on the number of children that were working downstairs. Mm -hmm. Tremendous compliments on the silent auction. And its display was purely professional. And of course, on our unusual recipe and the work of our dining room and kitchen crews. But it, it really was fantastic, and I thank you. Mm. Now, 
It's Herberger Community Days week. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This week. Now is when we really go forth and reap the benefits of our efforts this fall. And uh, Community Days are four days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I have five spots available. So I won't be selling the books in the back of the church, but if you want one, I've got them. But otherwise, I will be there if any of you feel that you could share two hours on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Uh, I'd be thrilled to write it in, and we'll give you detailed instructions as we get there. And uh, this is really an opportunity. And if you thought, well, you never get to use your coupons, that's wrong. Uh, come community days, they're good on almost everything in the store. So we hope that you can enjoy and reap the benefits. Thank you, Ms. Catherine. I'd like to invite all who are able to please rise as we greet those around us. Let them know how good it is to be in worship here at First Congregational United Church of Christ, where people believe, belong, and become. Good morning, Susie. And Susie. I'd invite you to please remain standing this morning as we continue in worship. I'll share a brief pastoral prayer of invocation, and then Susan Keene, our lay liturgist, will lead us in the responsive call to worship. Will you bow with me for prayer? For the blessings of this week, O oh God, we give you thanks for these on a custom warm days of fall, we praise your name. But more importantly, we thank you for your presence, your blessings, and your Son, our Savior Jesus. We've come to worship today and help us to be vulnerable in such a way that our hearts and minds are exposed to your loving presence, that we might be catapulted into new levels of spiritual awareness and service in your name. Amen. I would ask that you please join me in our responsive call to worship. Come, all who are anxious and burdened, this is a time to experience good news. This is God's house and we can meet God here. We are brought together in the family of God. Come with expectancy and anticipation. God is present to greet you and to bless your life. All things belong to you, O God. So it is that we worship, serve, and care. Please join in the opening hymn, All Things Are Yours.
may be seated. The first reading of scripture today is from the Psalms, chapter 147, verses 1 through 5, and verses 12 through 15. I'll be reading from the New International Version, and if you'd like to follow along, please turn to your Blue Pew Bible, page 582. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. God gathers the exiles of Israel. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. God's understanding has no limit. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For God has strengthened the bars of thy gates. God has blessed thy children within thee. God maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. God sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. God's word runneth very swiftly. Will all who are able please rise. membership committee headed up by Donna Jameson has done such a fantastic job in the last few years, creatively finding new and clever ways, I think, of enticing our members to uh, formally ally with this church and also strengthening the connection between our present membership. It's, a, it's an interesting job description and it's one that this committee has done a marvelous job with. At a meeting several months ago, we decided that it was time perhaps to celebrate again the new members that have come into our midst, who have experienced the warmth and fellowship of this place, have known your welcoming spirit, and have chosen to ally themselves with us formally. Today, as a sort of a fun way to acknowledge their presence among us, Susie Allen, as well as Mary Jo, Mary jo Hoxsprung have put together fun facts about our newest members. See if you can tell who these folks are. Susie? Our first one has chosen to come back home to our church. She enjoys sewing and has the same name as Pastor Scott, but is not related. Helen Babe King, please stand up. She's not here today? Helen is probably with her husband oh, today. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, we have another member, new member, who has moved back to Alexandra. Adria is a paraplanner with a mayor prize, enjoys quilting, reading, <coughs> photography, gardening, singing in the church choir, maybe. Lee Nelson, please stand up. Welcome. Welcome, Lee. Another new member who has moved back to Alexandria and his home church is a member of the Bob and Aurelia Nelson family, enjoys hunting, fishing, and hiking. Is Patrick Nelson here? Okay. Pat's well, we welcome him anyway. Yes. Recently confirmed and enjoys swimming, basketball, biking, camping, movies, <laughs> and favorite food, cheeseburger and french fries. Uh -huh. Is uh, A.J. Nelson here? Okay. We were going to be instant partners because cheeseburgers and french fries. Another recent 
Recently confirmed new member, enjoys tennis, swimming, listening to heavy metal music. That was hard to say. And her favorite food is Italian cuisine. Is um, Riley Thompson here? Okay. Okay. Well, we welcome. Uh, another person who was recently confirmed enjoys the, basically the everything. And their favorite food is pizza. <laughs> Is Austin Roars here? Oh, I'm batting zero here. <laughs> um, <laughs> recently confirmed. Well, anyway, even though they're not here, we welcome them all. Thank yes, you. we do. Thank you, Susie. Please remain seated as we continue in worship today. We'll sing our prayer hymn, We Give Thee But Thy Own. press from front to back and you probably couldn't have missed the article that featured one of our own members this week. The uh, article was entitled, Age No Obstacle for Alexandria's Harstad. Did anybody read this article? Yes. You make us proud, Steve. I got to say that right off the bat. 52-year-old set state deadlift record, broke it by six pounds. It's pretty impressive. And it's not that common, as it turns out. They say that 50 is the new 30, and Steve is living that out daily for everyone to see. I called Steve uh, <clears throat> earlier this morning, and I asked if I could feature him as our prayer lead-in today, and he assured me that would be okay. And I asked him, how does your faith in God play into all of this, Steve? He paused for a moment and he said, God gave me this body, and through consistency and regularity, I've been able to develop it. That discipline of consistency and regularity is a formula, I think, for developing our spiritual lives as well. Consistency in prayer is what Paul the Apostle calls us to, to the essentials of our faith, will also help us to prosper and be successful in the work and ministry that we're called to by God. I want to thank Steve for setting the bar so high for the other older members of our congregation. It's become uh, ever more clear that statistically speaking, age is a matter of your attitude. Folks live on average seven to eight years longer 
when they have a positive understanding of aging and do not see it as the end of life, but instead as open doors of opportunity to enjoy life more fully. For our time of prayer, I would like you to be aware of Judy and Ellis Harmon. Uh, they experienced a loss this week. Judy's uh, son, Bruce, died this morning, and she's asked for prayers for the family. No word yet on uh, where the service will be. We're praying continually for Barb Brown and members of the Pushing family. Since Todd's surgery a week ago, things do not look uh, positive or hopeful for him and important decisions will need to be made in the near future. And we pray also for Helen Keene. George uh, was brought back to Alexandria, home where I was able to visit him uh, most every day this week. And now he's going to be transferred to another setting where he can get some closer care and attention. Our people are in need, and at a time such as this, to rally around them with prayer, with the consistency of prayer, and the regularity of the spiritual dis discipline of our presence will go a long ways to helping them face these, these terrible health challenges. Join with me now in this time of prayer as Margaret bathes us in her beautiful music as we first silently come before God. And then I'll share a pastoral prayer and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer using debts and debtors. Will you bow with me? Gracious and loving God, you have always been present with us from the very earliest moments of our life, and you promise to be with us always in life and beyond life on this earth. We thank you for your continual love and presence, which brings us peace and comfort beyond human understanding, and at a time when many of our members are so much in need of your healing grace and love it brings us a sense of peace and consolation to know that you choose to be with us in the death of Bruce Ellis and Judy Harmon's son and in the sudden and unexpected twist in the life of Todd pushing and for the sudden decline in health and well-being for George Keene we know you are present and you make all of the difference dear God if we were left to our own resources alone we would be a people most hopeless and pitiful but in fact, because you are with us, O oh God, all things are possible. So even in the valley of the shadow of death, there is a light of hope and promise shining. Even now, in the midst of sadness and grief, we can find peace in the knowledge of your promises of life 
and new life. Be with all that we have named to get today in our hearts and minds as they face the everyday challenges of life which sometimes become so heavy and dehabilitating. Be with us as we face a new week. May we know not just your presence, but the promise of our faith that we can soar like eagles even in the midst of a storm. And now, O oh God, we gather all of our prayers together into that one prayer which Jesus, our Lord and Savior, taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. scripture lesson on which the homily today is based comes to us from the Gospel of Mark in the 12th chapter, verses 38 through 44. You can find that on page 49 of your Blue Pew Bible if you wish to follow along. <clears throat> Mark says, this is a warning against the teachers of the law. As teachers of the law, they like to walk around in flowing robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at the banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Then Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in just two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, 
but she gave out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Here ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. May God add a blessing to the hearing, understanding, and living of the word this day. Late one night, a burglar broke into a house that he thought was empty. He tiptoed through the living room, but suddenly he froze in his tracks when he heard a little squeaky voice say, Jesus is watching you. (laughs) Silence returned to the house, so the burglar crept forward again cautiously. Jesus is watching you. I can really do that. Frightened, the burglar stopped dead in his tracks again, and frantically he looked all around the room. Finally, in a dark corner, he spotted a parrot in a cage. He asked the parrot, was that you that said Jesus was watching me? Yes, said the parrot. The burglar breathed a sigh of relief, and he asked the parrot, what's your name? The parrot said, Moses. That's a dumb name for a parrot, the burglar said. What idiot named you Moses? The parrot replied, the same idiot that named the big Rottweiler over there Jesus. (laughs) It's one smart parrot, I got to (laughs) say. Thinking about the scene today described in the Gospel of Mark in the temple, it's rather amazing that Jesus noticed this woman at all. It has been, it would have been so easy to have focused on the many other people in that setting today. And and it's such an amazing moment, I think, because in it we catch yet another glimpse of the personality and the character of the founder of our faith. You can bet that nobody else noticed that woman today. And why not? because she was not particularly noticeable. She didn't have a bunch of money. She wasn't well-to-do or well-dressed. She wasn't powerful or influential in the community. She was an old woman who, by the standards of her day, had she was used up. She was down and out. She was out of food and out of money and out of luck out of what it took for a single woman to scratch out a living, living among people who looked right through her as if she were invisible. Think about that. Isn't it wonderful to know that we are not invisible to Jesus? Isn't it amazing to know that Jesus sees us and cares for us and has a heart for us, especially when we are at the lowest points of our lives? Isn't it comforting to know that when the rest of the world seems to be oblivious to our emotional sadness or a physical plight, God sees us. God responds to our deepest needs. It's important for me to point out that this was a significant moment in the life of Jesus for him to stop and to direct the attention of his disciples to see it, which is to say it was important back then, then it is also important for us today. Looking at this incident of the poor, desperate old woman giving her last two coins in the temple treasury, it's as if Jesus is saying to his disciples and to us today, if you're going to be one of my followers, This is where your eyes need to be focused, too. This is the place you need always to be directing your attention as the church if you're going to be one of my disciples. Jesus is saying today, keep your eyes fixed on those less fortunate than you. Focus especially on those in desperate need within your community. Watch out for those teetering on the edge in our society. They are your brothers and sisters. Don't forget that. Keep looking for the invisible ones, the folks others can't or don't seem to want to be bothered with. Have a heart for those God, your heavenly parent, has love and compassion for. Yeah, Jesus is saying, 
That's what ministry in my name looks like. If you're wondering, if you're curious, that's your call as the church of Jesus Christ. The minister, distraught over the price of haircuts in the big city where he lived, complained to his barber, how can I pay $18 for a haircut? I'm just a poor preacher. Yes, I know, said the stylist. I've heard you preach before. <laughs> I think perhaps there's more going on in this text this morning than first meets the eye. I didn't catch it at first. You remember a couple of sermons back when I told you that you couldn't really understand a piece of scripture unless you looked at what preceded it and what followed it in the, in the Bible. Well, it's noteworthy worthy that when Jesus leaves the temple today with his disciples, his public ministry is all for practical purposes over. In four days, according to the Bible, he'll be dead, having uncurled his fingers from around the offering of his own self. Jesus will have given up the two copper coins of his life on the cross. And that, we <clears throat> and that we may understand the intent here, if you ask me, there's another reason why Jesus noticed this poor widow today in the temple. She reminded him of someone. It was nearly the end of her life as well, and it was nearly the end of his life. She gave her all to a corrupt temple, and Jesus was about to give up his life for a corrupt and sinful world. She withheld nothing from God, and so it was that Jesus gave it all out of love for humanity in his obedience to God. In the end, she was abandoned and betrayed by a world that could not include her as its own. And so it was, too, that Jesus was abandoned and betrayed by a people who did not understand or embrace his sacrificial ways of unconditional love. I guess you could say that it took one to know one. When Jesus looked into the eyes of that poor widow this morning, it was as if he was looking into a mirror, a reflection so clear that he called his disciples over to see it for themselves. Look, Jesus said, to those who would follow him, that's what I've been talking about. Look at her. He could not have picked a less likely role model for them. If Jesus had taken a Polaroid snapshot of the temple that day and handed it to the disciples with the question underneath, where is Jesus in this picture? There would have been, <clears throat> they would have been tough to find an answer. There were lots of major, major movers and shakers in that room today, doctors of law and patrons of the arts and rich people and smart people and people with names and faces just like us, any one of them could have been better fit than this thin old woman in a widow's dress. But Jesus says to them, and he says to us today, she's the one I want you to see, the one giving out of her poverty, the one without a penny to her name, the one who is placing her complete and full trust in the power of God to provide for her and to save her. She's the one, Jesus says, that we need to watch today. She will point you in the direction of the kingdom. Very soon now, we're going to gather around this table, the Lord's table, and symbolically, we will sup with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We will, holding back nothing, gave his entire life for us. And he did so in love because he wanted us to learn that his path of sacrifice and love for all is the pathway to the kingdom of God. As it turns out, to see the need and to give of ourselves generously and sacrificially, those are the things that ultimately catch God's eye and attention. 
That's the snapshot of who we are called to be and what we are called to do in love for one another. Amen. So our dear Lord and Savior has invited us to this table. What today's scripture reminds us is that we are not alone around this table. The new life and the sustenance of this meal and the promise and just for us. If we were to look around and and see the invisible ones in our community, those who sleep in their cars at night, those who have too little food to eat, those who cannot find a job to keep that will put enough food on the table, then we will have also seen the others, the invisible ones, who are invited to this meal. Jesus knew his life was coming to an end soon. And yet in love for us, he reminded us of God's love for us. In this meal, Jesus took bread and having blessed and broke it, he said, this is my body, broken for each one of you for the forgiveness of sin. And then in a similar way, we are told that Jesus poured out the fruit of the vine, saying, This is my blood shed for you in love. And then he added the words, For as often as you eat of the bread my body and drink of the fruit of the vine, do so in remembrance of my great love for you. The table is spread. The invitation has been extended. Come now to sup with our Lord. Come now to new life.
This is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed in love that we may know new life. Take and drink. Will you bow with me for a brief prayer? <clears throat> Holy God, we thank you for refreshing us at your table by, by granting us here the presence of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. You have instilled within us the seeds of new life, and we thank you for that gift. New life here on this earth and new life promise in the kingdom to come. Bless us in our ministry, in our name. May we see those invisible to us in such a way that we recognize not strangers, but neighbors in need of your love and care. In Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. We have been refreshed at the Lord's table, and now our God invites us to give. We are privileged to contribute out of our abundance that the Christian message might be proclaimed among us and to our children. We are challenged to give all that we have, our time, our talents, our work, and even our leisure as witness to the love of God. The extent to which we invest ourselves is truly a measure of our commitment. Will the ushers please come forward? Join me in the unison prayer of dedication, which you'll find on the screen. We give in the spirit of Jesus, whose whole life was committed to proclaiming gracious God. May our lives give evidence that we understand the care and compassion you have for all people, near and far, attractive and offensive, rich and poor. Our offerings today are a token of all the gifts we now invest in the work of your realm that is forever, with beginnings among us now. Amen.
I want to thank you all for being in worship today. The, the day is not over. We're going to recognize our newest members and just celebrate our fellowship together. It's always wonderful when we have those opportunities, so we invite you to come down to the, the lower level for cake and coffee and a time of fellowship together. Following that, I would invite the confirmation students to join immediately in the Cambridge Room for our uh, scheduled retreat today. Join with me now in our responsive benediction. I will begin. What God builds among us is of lasting value. In the love of God, we guard the best that is in us. Our prayers keep strong our connection with God. They are not empty words for the sake of appearance. Salvation is here for those who are eager to receive it. Forgiveness and healing are freely given to all. We are thankful for the days God gives us. We rejoice in the good things we are receiving. Amen.